Marhaban and hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sara and I'm an art consultant based in London. Today I'm here visiting the studio of one of the artists that I represent. His name is James Vokiel. James is a British artist, but he actually grew up in Kenya. So let's go meet James. Thank you very much, Jane, for having me in the studio. I know that the studio is a very intimate place for an artist. Well, thanks for coming. Welcome. So can you please tell me a little bit more about your childhood in Kenya? Uh, yeah, I grew up in Nairobi um, and a little bit on the on the south coast of, of Kenya as well. Um, we spent um, yeah, many safaris traveling around. Um, yeah, it was a really enjoyable it's time. It's a very lucky childhood, I have to say. Then what was your first approach with art when you discover your love and your passion? I think it was yeah, just growing up, being on, you know, traveling around and going on safaris and I would um, do pen and ink sketches of wildlife. Um, nice. Yeah. And then you moved from Kenya, you moved to London or? Yeah, I went, I was at school in England. Um, I studied art and then I went to university in Leeds and studied art history. Um, and at that point, I sort of thought I'd work uh, in an auction house or a gallery, um, but decided to move to Florence in Italy. Uh, and I studied sort of classical realism and sculpture out there. Um, before returning. So how many years did you spend there? Uh, it was five years in total. Um, I was supposed to do one year and then I was asked to stay on and teach uh, and then I also um, started to work with an American sculptor as well so it ended up being five years. Yeah. I'm very curious to see how you work a little bit in the studio. Can you please give me a demonstration? Uh, sure, so this is um, well a bit of an experiment. I've been creating these um, canvases which again looking you know my I love texture so I've created these surfaces um, and actually on uh, Photoshop um, I've created these generative patterns which are based on what we'll call cheering patterns which I've now had cut out laser cut uh, in a in a studio elsewhere um, and then the next stage of the process is to put them together and I mean this is a I probably won't use this in exhibition who knows it might not come out I would spray some some glue and then I use the raw pigment which is comes in this powder form and is incredibly intense color uh, and I merely sprinkle it in and it will stick to the, the glue um, and I'll build up the surface textures uh, over a, you know an afternoon probably uh, and once I'm happy with it then I will spray it with a spray varnish on top to seal it um, and it's a similar technique to what I did um, in the echo chambers um, piece with the fingerprint. And here's the uh, stencil I used for the Echo Chambers uh, painting. And now I'm delighted to reveal some of the pieces of James's exclusive exhibition, which is called Musambweni Forest. You can see the artworks on my online gallery and the link is just here below in the description. James, you used the concept of Ma to design this painting. Can you please tell me more about? Yeah, so the, the basic concept of Ma, um, it's a Japanese concept and it sort of, it means in painting, it's the aesthetics of sort of space between gaps. Uh, in poetry, it's maybe the, the pause between words um, or in music, it's the sort of silence between notes. And so when I was designing this, I was um, thinking more about, you know, the gaps between the trees. Um, and so by doing that, I think it would draw the viewer much further into the painting. So rather than a traditional landscape, which was sort of, you know, looking more at the foreground, uh, this was sort of drawing the, the, um, the, the viewer in. This painting's called Shimba Hills. Um, and again, designing it, I was sort of looking at um, these sort of negative spaces in the background to draw the viewer in. Um, but also wanted to talk about the texture, which is um, when I, once I'd drawn in the, the composition, I'd um, lay the painting flat on a workbench and sprinkle in uh, raw pigment. Um, so this, this texture, which looks like sand, is actually pigment. Um, and I would sort of build up the texture um, and then use glazes over the top to seal it. Um, and then you can see areas like this and here, which is exposing the color below. I just used a palette knife or a standing knife and just cut away at it. Um, and that's sort of, yeah, that's how I get these sort of textured effects. Uh, so this painting is called Tagoni and um, it's sort of slightly different to the others because I painted it um, with Canada balsam um, as opposed to using oil. So all this, these 
uh, again using pigments I was mixing it directly with the, uh, with the Canada balsam so when you get up close you can see that the you know there's a lot more impasto there's sort of these brush strokes um, and they're also uh, they glisten a lot more in the background they don't glisten as much because I've used a matte varnish um, and then but left these um, leaves um, at the front um, sort of without the varnish on them so they sort of stand out a bit more uh, and once again sort of looking at the idea concept of Mar to kind of design um, use, looking at negative space as opposed to sort of directly at the images. So this is uh, another favourite of mine which is um, Mozambueni Forest. Um, again it's sort of uh, a lot of the texture is sort of built up by after I've drawn it in um, I sort of laying the painting flat on the workbench and sprinkling in pigments as you can see in areas here here they've actually left left them quite dry and exposed um, and then I've built up layers using the canna balsam um, and you can see here where I've used the palette knife or the standing knife to expose the red paint below which sort of just gives this idea of these uh, the flowers um, popping through um, so just yeah creating sort of an abstract um, atmosphere what I love about your painting is just when you see them you actually you feel you are there so it's really impressive you know it's very give me the feel that I'm there looking at the forest like you did there yeah. well I think that's the idea of the, trying to um, make the feeling that you're in nature rather than looking at nature and I think that's the, the idea of um, the concept of Mar kind of helps to do that uh, so this painting is called Echo Chambers um, and it's uh, an experimental piece it's sort of looking at um, cave painting and they sort of um, posing questions of human identity and as you can see there's um, a sort of fingerprint here which is uh, the reference to uh, the red handprints in cave painting um, and I created this using a stencil um, which I um, sprayed spray mount through uh, and then I blew the raw pigment uh, a bit like this um, onto or through the stencil um, and then I blew yeah blew the pigment on and it stuck to the glue um, and within the, the stencil there's some coding which is my Instagram like code and it's sort of the idea of you know looking at prime well you know the primordial past and then the potential future of um, you know a guided evolution or something like that. Thank you very much all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you like, you can subscribe on my YouTube channel so you can have more insight on the artwork. See you soon. Shukran.